Hi, so I'm going to do a question six from section two of prep test 77. So let's see, what have we got here? Okay, so this is a necessary assumption question. We've got the word depends and the word assumption. Okay, um, the political analyst's argument is the stimulus here. Okay, so this is an argument. So we're looking for the support and the conclusion. Okay, I do see a conclusion indicator word here for the last sentence. So I would hazard a guess that that's probably the conclusion. Uh, but let's go ahead and read from the beginning. Several years ago, McFarlane, the military dictator, had Brooks, the former prime minister, arrested on charges of corruption. After years of negotiation, McFarlane has pardoned Brooks and she has agreed to join his government. Almost all of McFarlane's supporters believe that Brooks is guilty of corruption. Moreover, almost all of McFarlane's opponents will oppose anyone who agrees to join his government. So Brooks will have few supporters in this country. Okay, so we have um, McFarlane's supporters believe he's guilty of corruption, or at least almost all of them. And almost all of McFarlane's opponents will oppose anyone who agrees to join his government. So if these two groups are mutually exclusive, which by their nature, they would have to be. Sorry, one second. Hi, so I'm back. I just had to go check on Jasper because um, something fell down, um, but he's fine. Okay, so um, where was I? Right, so the evidence for their conclusion is that almost all of McFarland's supporters believe that Brooks is guilty of corruption and almost all of McFarland's opponents will oppose anyone who agrees to join his government. So there's this um, dichotomy or um, like this split between supporters and opponents. And this represents like a larger issue that comes up a lot in logical reasoning, um, which is this idea of um, we have two options and the argument is kind of relying on those being um, the two options, but what if they are failing to consider a third? So um, there may be people who like are neutral toward McFarlane or don't consider themselves supporters of him or opponents of him. So um, like it's possible that there would be a third category um, that is neither supporters nor opponents. Um, so when you have uh, kind of like this branching of two opposite things, uh, I think it's always important to imagine, is it possible that either we could have an overlap between those things, be both a supporter and an opponent. Um, and I would say that that is unlikely to the point that it's like um, impossible. So um, by definition, you can't really be a supporter and an opponent. Um, at the same time. So that possibility I would rule out, but I do think it is possible that you could be neither a supporter nor an opponent. Um, and that neutral option is often the one that um, the LSAT writers are trying to see, like, can you notice that there may be a third option here? Um, so that's what I would kind of say is like the gap that they're not considering that maybe um, uh, yeah, support and opposition are not the only things. Um, so that actually brings me to answer choice D. Okay, so I do believe that that's the correct answer. We are dealing with a necessary assumption question, so we can go through this using the negation test, right, and see if I negate the answer choice, what impact does that have on the argument? Okay, so um, I'll use 
bit of annotation for this. Um, and I will go through each one and um, negate it and then see, actually just gonna go back and a little bit bigger for the font there. Um, so um, I'm just gonna take each of these sentences and negate it. And I'll write out the negation on the side here. And then we wanna ask what impact would that have on the argument? So Brooks is joining McFarland's government inappropriately gives that government a semblance of legitimacy. So um, that one, I um, before negating it, I could look at that and I could say, what impact would it have on the argument on its own, right? So what impact does the, does the original have? Um, and I would say that Brooks's joining would um, give it a, an appearance or a semblance of legitimacy. Um, probably the supporters would kind of um, approve of that. Maybe that's a reason why the opponents um, would oppose it. Um, but ultimately, is that going to strengthen the idea that Brooks will have few supporters in this country? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but if we negate it, right? So if it A is true, it would strengthen, but if it's false, okay. So if Brooks joining McFarland's government does not give a semblance of legitimacy, okay? So what if it doesn't? Well, that doesn't change the um, support that we do have for the conclusion. And so um, even if it doesn't do that, McFarland's opponents are still going to oppose anybody and McFarland's supporters still believe he's guilty of corruption. So um, even if it doesn't have this effect, it's still possible that Brooks would have few supporters in the, in the country based on the support that we have for that. So the negation of A can coexist with the conclusion Also, it doesn't ruin the connection between the support and the conclusion. So negating or removing A from the argument does not destroy the argument. So we're not really looking for something that just uh, weakens it. We want something that like is kind of fatal to the argument, right? Like if that thing is not true, then the argument falls apart, okay? So A doesn't follow, um, follow that or fit that test, okay? So the negation test with A, it doesn't work. So that means that A is eliminated. Okay. Let's check out B now. There is less corruption in the country's government now than when Brooks was prime minister. Okay, so how would we negate this? There is less. So the negation wouldn't tell me there is more. The negation would tell me there is not less. And not less means there's either more or the same amount of corruption. Okay. So the difference between the negation of less and the opposite of less is that the negation includes that it could be the same amount. Okay. So that's kind of that neutral third group that's often missed out on, right? That I was talking about earlier. It's a theme that keeps coming back up on the LSAT. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind that the negation is not the opposite. It's just saying that, what if this statement isn't true? What are the other options that, that we would have? So there isn't less corruption in the government now 
as when Brooks was prime minister. So what if, what if that is true? So what if there's the same amount of corruption now? Again, would that mean that Brooks would have few supporters? Would it mean that Brooks would have more supporters? Anything like anything like that? So, um, yeah, less corruption now than when Brooks was prime minister. Kind of uh, supports the idea that Brooks uh, was guilty of corruption, that he contributed to the corruption. Um, you know, so it does help uh, maybe a bit. But if there's not less corruption now, is that fatal to the argument? No, it doesn't completely ruin the argument. Um, and often these ones where there's an option that negating it just makes it neutral, often that neutral statement will not ruin the argument. So if you can negate an answer choice and come up with a neutral option, um, so here we negate less, it turns into not less, and that could mean it's the same. Um, if that's true, it's very unlikely that that's going to ruin the argument um, because it's just neutral, right? Um, it doesn't really give us anywhere to go. So that's why I would eliminate B. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, um, that it fails the negation test because we have a neutral option that isn't going to have an impact on the argument. It's not going to ruin the argument. All right, um, C. Brooks's political positions do not overlap with those of McFarlane. Um, okay, so um, what Brooks like believes or the positions that he has on different political issues are not the same as McFarlane's. Um, so yeah, we, we can't um, really glean too much from that, whether it's true or not, right? So if they don't overlap or they do overlap, which would be the negation here. Okay, so Brooks's political positions do overlap with McFarland's. Okay, that would be the negation of C. Um, if they do overlap with McFarland's, does that change the connection between the evidence and the conclusion? Right, we still know that almost all of McFarland supporters um, aren't gonna, you know, aren't gonna support Brooks probably, and we and that almost all of McFarland's opponents aren't going to support Brooks, right? So it's still we're still just looking at how many supporters um, is he gonna have, and that's based on these um, kind of ideas that we get from uh, from those second last two sentences. Okay, and this about the political positions that they have and that overlap isn't actually going to change what happens here. Okay, so Jasper has decided to come over and join us. Um, so hopefully he won't be too loud. Okay, removing that one. All right, so now we get to D. And I've already identified that I think D is probably the correct answer. Okay, so um, I'm gonna write out what um, the negation is of this, and it's most people in the country are not supportive. Uh, all righty, so if you still have eardrums after that, chicken. Someone just walked by the door. So um, he's kind of like a guard dog in that way. And the person who walked by the door was wearing a red jacket, which is his least favorite color. Um, so yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, chicken. So take a little time to think about why this one might break the connection between the evidence and the conclusion. Okay, so 
sorry. Jasper just pushed my phone off of the table. Having a parrot is kind of like having a dog and a cat and a lizard <laughs> and uh, a baby. <laughs> it's just, yeah, he's, um, he's really smart and really needy and he can fly. Yeah, it's, a, it's quite the adventure. <laughs> Just push my phone off again. Okay, um, so if most people in the country are not supporters or opponents, that would mean that they are neither. So if I negate the statement A or B, okay, the negation of A or B is neither A nor B. Okay, so that's kind of a tricky one, right? So A or B negated equals neither A nor B. Keep that, keep that in mind. That's like quite an important key um, that you can take with you to lots of other questions. So if most people are neither supporters nor opponents, then that means that most people aren't even covered by the evidence that we have here, right? Most people haven't even been considered. So how could we say that Brooks will have few supporters in this country if our evidence hasn't even considered what the majority of the people in the country are? So if the negation of D is true, it completely destroys the connection between the evidence and the conclusion. Hi, baby. Are you done? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he pushed my phone all the way onto the floor and now he's screaming at it because um, sometimes he likes my phone, right? Like it makes noises and you can watch little videos on it. So kind of like a toddler, you know, being like obsessed with your phone and wanting to take it all the time. Um, but he also gets a bit annoyed with my phone because sometimes when I'm on my phone, I'm not paying attention to him. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if he likes it and wants me to grab it and wants to see videos on it, or if he's kind of, he anthropomorphizes it and is jealous and getting back at it for taking my attention away. Who knows? Who knows what's going on in that tiny little brain? Um, yeah, so that's... Um, uh, that's D, okay? And D passes the negation test because the negation of D is going to ruin the argument, right? So I'm going to uh, delete this and then I'm going to talk about why E is wrong. So I'm gonna negate E, the charges on which Brooks was arrested were not, were not unfounded. So um, this bit here just modifies charges, okay, that part of the sentence. So the main verb in the sentence is were, okay, not was arrested. Okay, so we would not negate this because all this is is a description of the charges, right? They're Brooks's charges, right? Um, so uh, yeah, the Brooks, the, the charges that he um, had. Um, but the sentence is really about whether or not those charges were founded. Um, and so if they were not unfounded, that means that um, you know they, he was guilty, right? So basically um, it's, this is a question of whether Brooks was actually guilty of corruption or not. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter what the truth is, what matters is whether or not people believe in his guilt or innocence and what impact that has on how most people are going to support or not support Brooks. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that one. Okay, so on the LSAT, we really wanna make a distinction between reality 
we want to notice the distinction between reality, which is what E is about, whether or not um, there was actually evidence, okay, versus um, belief. Okay. And not only belief or, um, you know, uh, here it would be kind of their, you know, political stance, um, but also what action does that lead to, right? So um, we would think that McFarland supporters believing that he's guilty probably means that they're not going to support, right? And that when they say it's opposed, then yeah, they're not going to oppose. And that all kind of pulls into whether they're support or not. Um, but that support could be based on just a belief. And that belief doesn't have to actually be um, in accordance with reality, right? Um, so that's why E actually is irrelevant. Okay, so I'm going to uh, delete that now and uh, show the answer for this one. Okay. So the answer is D. All right, so hopefully that helps. Um, and hopefully this is something that you can generalize to other necessary assumption questions. Okay, um, yeah. So um, let me know if you want more clarification on this question or on any other uh, questions that you encounter. Have a good one.